Hey everyone, Peter Drew here. We've got Carl Safi with a question asked on the Facebook group, so I thought the best way to address it would be to do a Skype call and um, address it um, in person. And obviously I'll share it with you so everyone gets the information. And the question is, Peter, I work with numerous clients and was looking for your Hangout software for creating real profiles for them. As I watch the videos, it appears that we must set up fake accounts. But I work with real clients and would like to offer ranking service as a ranking service more aggressively. As I bring up clients, I'm happy I am actually handling the administration setup for their accounts. I obtain their phone number for verifying their accounts and physical address, etc. etc. My question is, is it okay to set up each client using their client details with this software and not to have to use fake email addresses? Thanks for your help. Great question, mate. Um, and yes, I've done that exactly what you what you're saying. Um, the House of Troy project that I did, um, I set up I set up that YouTube account using all their information, um, and and additionally, I made that um, YouTube account uh, look as professional as possible. I used her her phone number for verifying the account, and um, I can't remember which email address. I use, but it's important to when you set up the account to to set up the secondary email address. That makes verif verification that much easier going down the track. Particularly, so um, that's a really quick answer. But can you go through what your question is, and if you have any other questions? Yeah, Peter. It was um, primarily I'm looking at at scaling my business, and what appealed to me about Hangout Millionaire was that it actually leverages a lot more of the social media properties out there. So essentially, there's two ways I'm approaching this. Number one is from virtual virtual clients. In other words, they may not be living here. I have clients in the United States and other parts of Canada uh, yep. looking at brand, branching out over that. Uh, the second part is local business, and I'm getting to be quite known in the local community that I live in and want to awesome. be known as the the local dude or the local guru, if I could say it that way. You don't really need Absolutely. the title. I'll take the money instead. <laughs> but, yep, yep. but the point is, um, this al allows me to actually offer different uh, business models or pricing models. One would be, you know, sometimes a setup fee. There could be monthly fees in there. There could be, you know, uh, build costs when we're building websites, that kind of stuff, optimizing websites. So what I was really looking at uh, from that perspective was, if I want to do affiliate stuff, I understand that, you know, of course, I might want to set up all these other accounts. I understand the premise behind that. Uh, yep. My thinking is those of us that might be consultants and want to move more in that uh, area, just to give you kind of a frame of reference, I charge, mm -hmm. you know, between 5000 and up, 50000 30000 20000 15000 My average is between 7500 and 10000 per client plus monthlies plus a percentage of the back end. And awesome. uh, yeah, so I'm looking at, uh, that's basically what I was looking at, Hangout Millionaire. So I was a little concerned, but uh, if I can do it that way, where um, I'm seeing the uh, questions come up on, on Facebook there about do we have to send up a Twitter account? And if I'm if I'm missing the mark here, Peter, please you know chime in. But um, I'm thinking, look at every account is like a client, whether you're dealing with a client or not, or whether you're doing an affiliate program uh, that that way, you you have the same processes in place. Uh, if you're se setting up a um, a pen name account, we'll use that. Yep. Uh, or you're setting up a lot, like for example, I have an immigration lawyer in in the U.S. Uh, I'm working with, and I've set up literally all their social media accounts, their YouTube yep. account, their Google Plus account, etc. So, Hangout Millionaire really fits into that model. So, am I hitting that right? Does that make sense, Peter? Absolutely, and um, I'll take it another step further. Generally, I've got three types of accounts. I have a generic account, and the generic account, um, I make sure I link that out. I, l I link out the uh, username, the link of that uh, YouTube account everywhere, so I'm building authority to that generic account. And I use the generic account just to, because using Hangout Millionaire is so fast, I can do really quick test, um, test cases or test studies using that account. And then if I approve that this niche is good, then I'll then I'll progress on to making the the legitimate accounts for those clients or for that affiliate product. 
So instead of, if I'm saying an affiliate product comes up and I think that's going to do really well, instead of going through the process of setting up all the accounts first, I'll use the generic account and, and throw up five or ten videos and see, see how they rank. Mm -hmm. And if they're ranking mm -hmm. well, then I'll move on to progressing to setting up an affiliate, uh, a set of accounts based on that niche, for example. And similarly for, um, it's great to have that generic account there um, to woo potential clients because you can throw up five or ten videos really fast and get them to rank for your client, for, you know, pretty much, and, and get the rankings and, and daze them, dazzle them with um, your brilliance. You That's know? cool. I like that. And, yeah. the, and then, you, then you progress on. Then once you've got the sale, then you go ahead and, and create the, the legitimate uh, YouTube accounts and Twitter accounts, etc., for um, that client. Oh, there was, there was something else I wanted to say. Well, Sorry, just, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Peter, just, okay, so let me say this then. So I did, uh, interestingly enough, I did set up a, a generic account, and I thought there that it would be useful for the testing. I was reading through some of the documentation there. Um, so once you do some testing for a client, then you can take those videos that you tested. If You, you, you could tie those into the client site or the client uh, system. Would it be, that would be easy enough to move them over, right? Just upload them to their YouTube accounts? No. No. You, well, you, you, you control 100% of those um, videos on your generic account, so you just put, put the links and referrals to whatever it is that you're promoting and leave them on. Oh, and just leave, leave them, them where they account. are. Oh, fair Absolutely. enough. Yeah. Absolutely. And then when your client comes along and sees that, that their video is ranking under two separate accounts, it's even better. That shows you're doing an awesome job. Excellent. The, the, the other point I'd like to make is that um, there's like a 0.1% chance of, um, of, your, of a YouTube account getting a penalty, particularly if people are using dodgy keywords in a dodgy market. You, and and, and, and that, I've seen that happen already in the past, so I really like to keep um, our work 100% separate from clients. So you do exactly what you're doing, which is creating a brand new account and working on that account. And it's really important to follow the information in the advanced account strategies document. And that's what makes your accounts really powerful and makes them stick. And they will, and we haven't had one person who's used those strategies have an account limited in, in, in any way. So, so that's, that's the safest method then. So really, you know, it's a good idea to understand how to set up a client site. Then you could set your affiliate sites up. I'm just trying to give people kind of a frame of reference because I've been doing this for years and mm -hmm. you've come up with a great tool here that, you know, this does what I'm expecting, you know, it can really scale my business a lot. But, you know, when, people, when people come into a tool with this kind of, I mean, I'm just wrapping my head around the software. I, I, can't, I can't believe that it's, it's kind of here and I'm saying, okay, is this really too good to be true or I'm really <laughs> excited. I'm really excited, Peter, about I want to be one of the you know, one of the exam. I'm already doing this in the in the in the you know in the manual sense, and I've got mm -hmm. some automated software. But when you can tie everything together, like what you it appears you've done here with uh, Hangout Millionaire, I, I think this could really, really, you know, it's one of those softwares that could or pieces of software that could level the playing field. I think. Absolutely. My concern, uh, and, and just one more thing, Peter. I'm so, sorry to sure. cut, cut in there. Um, the thing that, that that always concerns me because I'm dealing with you know very very you know important business owners and I think most of us think or all of us think that we are but you know th some of these companies are doing millions of dollars and and I would hate to be setting up anything uh, that would you know jeopardize their brand or jeopardize their uh, you know their social media accounts or anything like that so I think part of my question in this was. When I saw the fake emails, I do understand. I do understand from the affiliate side of things. I I'm, I'm really wanted clarification more for the legitimacy of, hey, can I use this software? I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing deceptive here. We're we're working with these real like these real clients here. We're really setting up their YouTube and their Twitter and their Facebook and uh, the other accounts. So my concern, uh, as as I think many would be, would be that would I have a problem? You know, when you start rolling this thing out and in putting, doing the push button on it, is it going to be problematic in the future? Will accounts be suspended or anything like that? No, oh, absolutely not. I'll, I'll explain why I put the uh, fake email address system in there, and it's purely for convenience. So uh, when you create a Google account, obviously you need to have um, 
instead of having uh, one email address for every Google account up, account we create, <coughs> we redirect that fake email address to one email address. So any any emails that are sent to any of the accounts that are created go to one email address. A, one email address. So it's purely convenience. Those fake email addresses, when an email is sent to that fake email email address, it's forwarded to the email address you assign. So I have one email address that I use for all the fake ones. So any emails that go to any of those previous accounts I've made come into my inbox to just one email. So it, it was just um, uh, for convenience. That's the right. only reason it's that. Yeah. Gotcha. And then the phone number too, because you know that Google likes to uh, to verify through phone. And I, I bought some stuff on Fiverr. And again, I'm I'm just telling you from an experience. I had one experience, so I didn't have 50 experiences. I had one experience where I had bought a list of uh, phone numbers, um, or a, I think it was Google accounts. I don't think it was phone numbers. And then <laughs> when I, when I set them up, uh, none of them could. I couldn't verify any of them because it kept asking for. Uh, a phone number, and of course I was stymied. I didn't know what to do from there, so that was just a challenge. But then in in the documentation, I do see that there's a tool that you uh, that you recommend. I'm sorry, I don't have it at my fingertips for actually, uh, you know, f uh, phone verification. That's Twilio or something like that. I, I forget what that's, it is. That's that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's in the PDF. Yep. Right. Um, lots of it, lots of our people using it with um, great success. Excellent. Uh, there was just one more point I wanted to make. And I, I've lost it. It'll come to you. It will come to me. So, so go ahead. No, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. So, uh, again, my thinking is um, I'm about to launch some things in the near future here where I'll be promoting my services and, you know, any way I can help out and give some insight, you know, with my business model or that kind of thing to help people, you know, even price services and that kind of thing. I'd be free to do that too as well, Peter. Okay, that's perfect. Um, I think we'll field some calls and um, posts in the Facebook group over, group over the next couple of weeks and maybe get together and do another call like this one where we can both um, answer some of those questions because it sounds like you've been doing this for a long time. And I just remembered what I wanted to what I wanted to say. It came back to me. Sure. Um, sure. Um, typically, using uh, an automated software like this, you're producing a lot of videos for um, your clients' accounts. And it's important when you set up a YouTube account that you put the best video. Um, I'm just pulling out my YouTube account now. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but in the setup of the account, um, what's it called? Uh, the, you can set up your account so you have one video presented all the time at the top left of your YouTube profile. Um, I have it. I have my YouTube account set up, so I've uploaded one, the best video first, and that is the uh, the trailer video. That's what it's called. Okay. And then, I, and depending on what other content you have, but the I, the point being that when people come to the, if they will look at one of your videos and then go back to your channel, you have a trailer which presents the best case moving forward for your client. The trailer video and then just the recently uploaded videos so your front page isn't cluttered with um, 30 or 50 uploaded videos that are very similar so by using the the trailer and just the one section where there's uploaded videos they'll see the trailer plus the three most recently up uploaded videos and it makes your account look your YouTube account look look um as pretty as it can be, so to speak. I've seen that layout and it looks pretty cool and I wondered how do you do that? So you're teaching that in this program too as well. Are you? No no I haven't. <laughs> no yeah, hey that's a great that's a great maybe that's an add on bonus or something but <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, yeah. But but you know, because I looked at that now, do you have to have the you know on the on the features of the YouTube channel you can select different features on there and yes. uh, advanced features you can actually and, and I and anyone that doesn't do it should go in and, and set all the features like you can do the live uh, live video too as well enable I think it's enable live event I think it's called